an introvert. I have every stereotypical personality trait of an introvert. And every single personality test I've ever done has also confirmed that. But I've always dreamed of having a bigger life. And I knew my introverted tendencies were going to get in the way of that. So in 2019, I set out on a mission to adopt extroverted traits that would help me get ahead in life. Fast forward to now, and I have done numerous public speaking gigs at schools, universities, and even Vogue House. I learned how to walk up to strangers to meet new people, and this helped me massively when turning up to dozens of networking events all alone. As a result, I stepped outside of my comfort zone and found a whole new group of friends that actually aligned to my mindset and my goals. And I even put videos of myself speaking on the internet multiple times a week on different social media platforms to the point where you probably never would have guessed that I am an introvert. I am gonna teach you how to be a chameleon so that you can adopt any traits you need in your life at any time in order to level up your life. Quick note, don't forget that I have my podcast, Instagram, Snapchat, second YouTube channel, all linked below in the description for you to check out. If you want to see some of the public speaking I've done or my daily productive routines, that's all on my vlog channel in the description. Chapter number one, understanding the differences between being introverted and extroverted and all of the misconceptions around it. Because the sooner that you actually understand this, the sooner that you can start adopting the traits that you desire. And I wanna start this by answering the question, can I go from introvert to extrovert? It's a hard no. This is because being introverted isn't about your level of shyness or your confidence. It's literally just about where you draw your energy from. This is a literal part of your brain. You can't just make the switch to being an extrovert, but you can adopt that kind of mindset and traits in networking environments or in social environments, which I'm going to teach you in this video. But really, all that being an introvert means is that they draw their energy from their alone time, from their solitude, whereas an extrovert draws all of their energy from social gatherings and being with other people. So now let's get into the traits of what really makes somebody an introvert. They prefer one-on-one -on -one deep conversations as opposed to small talk with a bunch of acquaintances. They require some time alone to actually recharge their social battery after being with a lot of people. They're very self-reflective. They're very in their thoughts, very self-aware. We love to see it. They work very well alone. You know, they're very independent people. In terms of friendships, they have a small but very tight-knit close group of friends. They also do a lot of of mental rehearsal so you'll always catch them thinking before they act before they speak sometimes they can easily overthink oftentimes they can feel very misunderstood and like an outsider I personally think that's just because they're very deep and very self-aware and emotionally intelligent so it takes more for them to feel like they're gonna be understood and then lastly many of them but not all tend to be creative and also like to read on the other hand we have extroverts these are people who are energized by being around others and having lots of social engagements they tend to be more outgoing they thrive in group work and team activities I personally could not think of anything worse they do spend time alone but they just don't need a lot of it they don't need as much of it to recharge their batteries as an introvert would. They also tend to talk out their problems a lot to other people rather than keeping all of their feelings on the inside and trying to deal with it independently. They can be very flexible and very assertive, which will definitely help them in work environments. They have many friends and acquaintances, and this is because they know how to relate well to others, which is personally a trait that I was very jealous of as an introvert and set out on my mission to achieve. And before I spill all of the secrets on shifts you can make to start gaining those qualities, I want to quickly run through the misconceptions people make about introverts and extroverts. The first misconception is that introverts don't like to talk. Absolutely not. Introverts can be very open, very talkative, have so many interesting things to talk about. Hello, I am an example. Just because they don't want to talk to everyone doesn't mean that they don't have the capability to be so talkative and so interesting. The second misconception is that being an extrovert automatically means that you are confident. Absolutely not, honey. I have known many people in my lifetime who are really good at conversing with strangers, walking up to random people, networking, but that doesn't mean they're confident. They're not confident in themselves or they have insecurities they have to work through. Whereas there are introverts who are, might actually be shy and might be reserved, but they are very secure in who they are and how they feel about themselves. This leads me onto the third misconception, which is that all introverts are shy. Absolutely not. Some of them may be, but let's get the definition of being shy correct first. Being shy is defined as having an insecurity and discomfort with being around other people. 
A lot of introverts aren't insecure or uncomfortable with being around other people. They just value their peace and privacy first and foremost. The next misconception is that extroverts don't get along with introverts. Throughout my entire life experience, I have found that they actually get along great because of their differences. And that's because they push each other and especially because they kind of make up for what the other one lacks. So I think it works great in a relationship as well. And the last misconception is that introverts have no emotions. Just because an introvert is not telling you their deepest darkest secrets and why they are so upset about something does not make them a void of any emotion, okay? Because nine times out of 10, they can feel all of their emotions. They are also very aware of every single emotion they're experiencing because they're so self-aware, introspective, and emotionally intelligent. They just like to keep it to themselves and talk themselves through it. Chapter number two, now it's time to spill all of the secrets on what shifts you can use to gain more extroverted qualities. Okay, I am not here to tell you you need to change yourself. I am saying there are certain things that you can add to your life to try and make things a little bit easier for you and this is because of something called the extrovert bias and all this means is that basically society is more conditioned to be more accepting of people that are extroverts and the world and the career ladder was also built for extroverts think about it every sort of like um, work event networking event how to get ahead in a lot of situations in life you have to be an extrovert in order to succeed in those tasks and a lot of the time being an introvert means that you are isolated at work or it's harder for you to make friends because people will immediately label you as antisocial or rude or boring because think about it if your work culture is that at 5 p.m after work has done everyone goes to the pub to socialize and you're like hold up i just want to go to bed sort my life out and then go to sleep because i've been talking to you lot for the last eight hours why do i want to spend the rest of my evening with my work colleagues which is so understandable by the way and i would think the exact same thing you're going to be discriminated against you're going to be seen as antisocial. no one's going to want to be friends with you and i've heard a lot of people say that they got promotions at their workplace simply because they just got friendly and were more talkative to the higher ups in their company at after work drinks and what happens at after work drinks it's just small talk with a bunch of acquaintances that you're probably not even real friends with and yet apparently you have to do it to get ahead in the workplace i think that that is a major flaw in society but i don't think it's going away anytime soon and that leads us onto all of the shifts we can make to make this a little bit easier okay so the first tip i have from my personal experience is always be feeling yourself always be feeling yourself even if it means you have to wake up an hour earlier in the morning Please, everybody underestimates the power of putting effort into your appearance and how it alters how you carry yourself for the day. And then as a result, the energy you exude to everybody else around you. If you stay quiet and you're in your own bubble, but you are feeling yourself and you're confident because you love the way you look, automatically your body language has changed, your facial expression has changed, your energy, your aura has changed. And then you don't even need to talk to other people because now people are drawn to you. Because aside from it, making you feel super beautiful on that day i feel like it really helps with identity shifting it's kind of like your uniform that as soon as i get dressed in this way and i look this way i no longer identify with my introverted self who likes to stay at home in bed in my pjs just reading and doing what i want to do when i get dressed in these clothes you identify as someone who goes out into the world who likes to talk to people the second thing that helped me in my personal experience was letting go of my fear of being perceived. I used to be a really insecure person and as a result I always used to overthink about what other people's opinions of me were and I really used to fear being judged. But nowadays my mindset is why would I step away from my abundance to even acknowledge such low vibe behavior? Meaning happy people don't judge. If you are not judging me or thinking about me in a harsh way when you barely even know me you don't deserve my attention in the first place because that literally says so much about you, about how insecure you are. The kind of people that will laugh at you and make harsh judgments about you aren't even worth your reaction in the first place because their opinions hold no weight. They clearly have so much work to do on themselves and they are ignoring that to instead shift their attention and project all of their insecure feelings onto you because they don't even have enough self-love to actually acknowledge, hey, I don't feel great about myself, so let me work on 
they can't even do that much for themselves. So please, they have no business having a valid opinion of you, like ever. The people that are judging you have a fear of being perceived themselves. Because if they see you out here in like a really nice outfit or your makeup's done and they're trying to like bully you for it, it's because they themselves cannot comprehend why you would have the confidence and courage to go out dressed like that or to post that picture on social media or to post that video or to talk in the way that you do or to have the sense of humor that you do because they are constantly performing for others and to see you living in your authenticity and not performing for others triggers them so they label you as cringy or embarrassing the third thing that helped me was fake it till i make it and i will stand behind this until the day i die because it truly transformed my life one autumn day in 2019 i am not joking i had this shy introverted insecure reputation for years and i desperately wanted to get rid of it and fake it till I make it was exactly how I did it. Now, don't get me wrong. Fake it till you make it is not the answer to establishing long-term confidence and self-love. There is so much to do after that. However, I do think fake it till you make it is the first important step you do, which is exactly what I did in my journey. So I moved away to university and what helped me was I was in a new city and nobody knew me there. So I was like, I have been in school for the last seven years and everyone's known me as the shy quiet girl that isn't friendly and they can't talk to you and is like kind of a dork and a nerd i don't want to be that anymore so i just imagined what would the highest like most confident extroverted outgoing version of myself look like talk like act like and then i just did it fake it till you make it isn't about pretending to be somebody you're not it's about embodying the kind of characteristics that you want to adopt until they feel natural to you it's like you can't sit around and complain why am i not confident and why can i not talk to new people you just need to go out and do it as if you already know how to do it and then you'll get it it also links into what i said earlier about having an identity shift the longer that you stay in this narrative that i am an introvert and i am shy and i can't talk to people how are you ever going to be anything other than that going to university allowed me to separate myself from who i had grown up to be my entire life which was someone who had none of the skills i currently possess going to university helped because it was a different environment if you can't do that create a different environment yourself through either changing the way that you dress changing who you surround yourself with changing the route that you walk every single day. It can be the smallest shift that signals to your brain, we're different now. What really helps with this is creating an alter ego. And I think everybody needs to have one of these. And then the last thing that really helped me on my journey was to focus on the energy I was holding. And that really helped me shift from being the most forgettable person in the room to being the most magnetic person in the room. And do you know what the key is to having the most beautiful magnetic energy in a room? mastering detachment because let me tell you when you are sitting alone quiet in a corner overthinking worrying about what other people are thinking of you what their opinions must be oh my god they must be judging me everyone's having a great time and i can't even talk to anybody no one here wants to be my friends nobody here likes my outfit even though you were quietly thinking that in your brain everyone can sense that energy whereas when you have mastered detachment and you walk into a room full of people and you still don't know any of them but you're like i like myself the only person here who's ever gonna have a valid, correct opinion of me is me. And I was not born to impress any of you. And you might not like me, but I also might not like you. And that's completely okay because not everybody is meant for each other. And I'm not a people pleaser. I'm here to have a good time. I'm here to grow. I'm here to have life experiences and create some sort of joy because that is my birthright. You are all strangers. Why would I ever put any of you on a pedestal who said that any of these people were better than you? That whatever opinion they have of you automatically outweighs your own. Please, when you start thinking like that, your energy is gonna show it. Your body language is gonna show it. Act like royalty and you will be treated as such. And listen, if you're more reserved and quiet and you don't wanna speak, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you're gonna do that, then do it confidently. Don't do it thinking, oh my God, should I speak now? Am I being too quiet? No. Hold your own. Respect that you are the way you are and there's nothing wrong with that. Confident silence is so attractive that other people will be running in circles trying to fill those gaps in your conversation. Whereas nervous silence is so unattractive that people are gonna see that you're standing there nervous about what to say because you're putting them on a pedestal because you are worried about what they think about you because deep down you think they're better than you. And they are gonna see right through that and they are going to believe that they're better than you and then why should they speak to you? Okay, and then next up for the shifts, I actually 
asked you guys a few questions on Instagram about what you wanted to know about going from introvert to extrovert and you guys answered these questions on my broadcast channel. Okay, so to start off, a lot of you wanted to know how to fix feeling socially anxious and awkward. Some of you said that when you're out in public, you feel like you're being watched and you feel self-conscious in public spaces. Okay, so my question to you is, why is it so bad if you're being watched? When I go out, I know people are gonna look at me and watch me. I don't try to deny that fact because people look, it's normal, it's human nature. When I go out, I am people watching like crazy, but 100% of the time, I'm never thinking anything bad about anybody else. I'm never judging them. A lot of the time, I'm just in my own head trying to think about what I have to do next in my day while also just looking at the beautiful human beings in front of me. Why do you not believe that someone is not watching you and admiring you? The reason you feel self-conscious in public is because you have a fear of being perceived and you automatically assume that that perception is going to be negative. When you're worried that people are judging you in public spaces, it's really because you're judging yourself. And my favorite way to overcome this is exposure therapy. Next time you're out in public, I challenge you to look back smile even. It's terrifying, I know, because I used to feel the exact same way as you for several whole years before I learned this, but when you feel the fear and you do it anyway, you look back, you smile, you walk with your head up at least, you'll realize, hey, nothing bad is happening. You made that narrative up all on your own, in your own head, and when you prove it to be false by looking back or smiling back, the fear will no longer come back to haunt you every single time you're out in a public space. And then the next thing I think would really help with this is self-love, of course. I need you to get so comfortable with taking up space because you deserve to take up space. I need you to love the fact that people are watching you because they are literally in the presence of such a gorgeous specimen. And that is such a simple mindset shift that will literally transform your entire experience when you are out and about in front of others. The second question I got was, how do I avoid missing opportunities because of my introvert nature? I totally get this. It's a very scary thought to think that because you're more quiet and reserved, there are so many things that you might have missed out on. As someone who didn't speak a lot for years, I still don't believe that there was anything I missed out on because if it was meant for me, it would have found me and it would have come to me regardless. That personally just grants me peace and allows me to accept my introverted tendencies. But in order to answer your question, I'm just gonna say that my belief isn't correct, okay? Just for the sake of the question. The trait that you're lacking with this is the ability to sell yourself. The more comfortable you are with doing so, the further you're, that you're gonna get, the more people you're gonna meet, the better network you're gonna have. You need to get so familiar with your self-worth that you can announce it with confidence effortlessly. And to be honest, that's a whole video in itself. And I think there are multiple books that you can find and multiple online courses and videos that speak about that in detail, you know, selling yourself when meeting new people. But for now, I just wanna say that I think the most important step is immersing yourself in discomfort. You have to intentionally place yourself in environments where you are forced to figure it out regardless. And that is exactly how I got to where I am. I turned up to my first ever networking event in my life all alone nine months ago and I was terrified and I was standing in the corner scrolling on my phone to look busy and I was riddled with anxiety thinking I should be meeting so many people right now I'm gonna miss opportunities because of this everyone else is doing it so easily but you know what I already did the hard part which was showing up in the first place I put myself in that room there was no way I could escape from that situation now I focused on how can I just be friends with this person not even how can I be friends with them? How can I just put a smile on this person's face and just spread some positive energy? And it instantly alleviates all of the pressure off you because you're no longer thinking about how am I coming across and what am I saying? Then I got a lot of questions on how do you, you know, master public speaking as an introvert? And for me, I've done quite a few of these now throughout the year and I have sat in such big rooms with such important people having to give a speech to loads of people that were all looking at me and it was terrifying and I would go red and my legs were literally shaking. The biggest mistake I ever made was handing myself out to be defined by other people's opinions of me. But now I'm so detached that when I walk into a room, my main priority is how can I just try and help these people learn something new and offer a little bit of value. All I can do is give it my best shot. The only person I have to prove something to is myself. And guess what? I've already done it by just showing up and taking the public speaking gig. I also think your portfolio of proof is really important in this. This is something I spoke about in my confidence video. Basically, the more that you do things that are outside of your comfort zone, the more that you push yourself, you basically make this mental portfolio that every time you're about to do something scary and you don't think you have the courage to do it, you can think back and be like, oh my God, but 
you know, last time I felt this way, I did it anyway, and then it turned out to be fine. And then the other time I did that thing in front of a bunch of people, I was scared to do it, but then everything turned out well. So even if you don't have a portfolio of proof yet, the next time you have to stand up and speak in front of a bunch of people, I just want you to reassure yourself that this is gonna be a positive experience regardless because it's gonna teach you a lesson and it's gonna begin your portfolio of proof so that the next time you do it, this is your starting step. This is the moment that is going to allow you to continue to do this and grow and become better at it and better at it. The next question you guys sent was, how do I match the vibe while being around extroverted people? You're not supposed to get along with everyone. How are you ever going to develop deep and meaningful and authentic connections with people if you're constantly concerning yourself with how to match that energy and assuming that their energy and vibe is the right way to be? You're not supposed to mirror other people. And I spent years of my life doing that. And you know what it led to? It led to me having a lot of acquaintances and friends and being easygoing and people being able to talk to me. But none of those people were my people. And I didn't have any friends. I didn't have anyone I could trust. And I felt misunderstood all the time. Then I lent into my weirdness and my quirkiness and my introverted nature. And I didn't get along with any, every, everyone. And I didn't fit in with so many people. But along the line because I was being authentic it attracted the people that actually accepted me for exactly who I am and now I have friends that are actually meant for me because I was being myself when I met them the next question is how do people know what to talk about in social situations and how do you keep a conversation going um, and somebody else asked how do you talk to a stranger my favorite hack for this is to focus on how you're going to make them feel. Like I said before, when you walk into a room, it's not about how am I gonna come across and how do I make them like me, it's how can I have a meaningful conversation with them? So simple and sometimes people will give you a long response and that's good because then you can pick on what they said to then form your next question. You know, if they're saying, oh my God, I'm so tired, I just came back from work. Oh, what do you do for work? And then whatever they say after that, then another question, another question. You know, if they give a super basic response, like, oh, I'm okay, then you're gonna have a few other backup questions. So my favorites are, how'd you spend the weekend? What was your morning like? What are you doing after this event? Oh my God, I love your top, where did you get it from? Really lean into your listing because it's your biggest superpower as an introvert. People love speaking about themselves. So when you use this questioning technique, it's automatically going to make you seem so interesting and so likable and so friendly and approachable. My advice is don't talk about yourself too much at first. Obviously, just lean into that listening and questioning them. However, it's important to learn how to offer up pieces of information about yourself, just so it doesn't seem like you're interviewing them by just asking question after question. So for example, if you're like, what did you do at the weekend? And then they say that, then you just say, oh yeah, I've actually been wanting to do that for ages or you're like oh um what was that like because i'm just at home all weekend and i normally do this etc etc the next question is how do i deal with change as an introvert even quitting a job feels heavy i fully get this it can be so hard because you have to change your environment and therefore your stimuli and then you have to meet a bunch of new people and as an introvert that is so icky but what helped me is i changed my perspective on it when i have to deal with a big change now i think I'm going to meet a new part of myself because of this change. And us introverts are so self-aware and so introspective. It's like, wow, we are doing a massive step for our self-growth and our relationship to ourselves. So really, a big change is a win. It might be uncomfortable, but again, it's a win because discomfort makes us more disciplined in every other area of our lives. As an introvert, I really like to plan and it's what I use to calm myself down when I'm about to encounter unfamiliar situations that just upsets my introverted nature and preferences. So for example, like I said before, when I just started networking and trying to talk to new people beforehand, I would think about what my conversation starters were and it calmed me down because then I knew when I'm going into this place, I know exactly what I'm going to ask these people. I know how I'm gonna try and make friends with them. I know how I'm gonna carry myself. I know what my outfit even is gonna be for the day. And that just reduces the uncertainty that you experience around that change. And it gives you a little bit of control around it. And you said like leaving a job, just having a strategy, you know, I'll spend like two hours one day forming my schedule, my calendar for the next two weeks of what time am I gonna use to apply to new jobs? And what websites am I gonna use? Get yourself so familiar with this plan and walk through it in baby steps so that this big change all of a sudden actually feels very easy and familiar. The overall theme of all of the questions were just about, you know, making friends, being more outgoing, socially confident. A lot of us self-sabotage by complaining about the fact that we don't have a skill and then not doing anything to change it. And then we're just stuck in the same place our entire lives. And we are underestimating how much self-education can make us transform 
transform into completely different people that we have always dreamed of being. When you go onto Skillshare, you can literally type in confidence and you can take several different classes or just simply watch a video on social confidence, specifically how to use social confidence in a networking environment if that's what you need in your life, how to develop better self-esteem, which is what we talked about before, you know, a lot of our insecurity or shyness doesn't come from being an introvert, it comes from a lack of confidence and self-esteem. I've taken the class on overall confidence, self-esteem and social skills and from this I learned all about the effect that fear of social failure can have on your ability to talk to important people. I'm currently taking the learning path, master management skills to build and retain talented teams because this is something I literally know nothing about. I'm actually starting to have a preference for the learning paths tab on Skillshare. So learning paths are basically hand-picked classes that are meant to be taken in order and as you go through them they basically build on one another to reinforce all of the lessons so that you actually retain all of the information. And then in addition to that, they have a variety of categories for you to learn from. So design, productivity, creative freelancing, even specific tools and software like Procreate and Blender, marketing, and so much more. So if you are ready to stop self-sabotaging and level up in 2024, then you can join Skillshare. And if you click the link in my description, the first 500 people to use my link will get a whole month of Skillshare completely free. And that leads us onto the last chapter of the video, the homework chapter so that you can hold yourself accountable and actually put the advice you learned from this video into action. But homework task number one is exposure therapy. I need you to take this seriously because it is my personal favorite tip. Start a conversation with your barista when you go and get a coffee. In your work environment, I don't know what you do, opt for the Zoom meeting or to meet them in person rather than talking over email. Your exposure therapy task could be absolutely anything but it has to be personal to you depending on what you're personally struggling with. Homework task number two is self-education. You can learn all about confidence through my Mastering Confidence video on YouTube, or you can read a book all about confidence how to win friends and influence people by dale carnegie is actually a really good one that so many people recommend and will be really suited to an introvert or you can go on skillshare type in the word confidence and take the class that is most suited to you task number three is another personal favorite of mine next time you go out i want you to stop dressing for the occasion and start dressing for how it's going to make you feel and forget your worry of being too overdressed and being perceived because we already know that that no longer matters Task number four is to take yourself on a solo date. And this is so good because as an introvert, you're a little bit comfortable because you're already in your bubble. You're allowing yourself to spend time with yourself, but you have to do it in a public space. And this is going to allow you to overcome your fear of being perceived because once again, it's an act of exposure therapy while not having to go out and talk to a bunch of people. But if you have been watching my videos for a while, then I want you to take this a step further because I know so many of you have already been solo dating and for that, I'm so proud. You're gonna make it a little bit challenging and wherever you go, whether it's a restaurant, cafe, I want you to speak to your server. And then the last homework task is to develop a better relationship with yourself because it truly is the key to everything. Your energy is everything. And also if you are developing a relationship with yourself and therefore growing your confidence, you're going to easily master detachment. And after that, everything else is just going to fall into place. Speaking of, I have a whole video guide on how to master detachment, so check that out. And if you wanna learn more in detail about developing your self-love and having a close relationship to yourself so that everything falls into a place, I talk about that in much more detail on my podcast, Self Obsessed, which is linked below, so check it out. I really hope you learned something from, from this video. I would love if you could comment down below and let me know what you learned, because I love to read through so that I can keep improving my videos for you guys. I appreciate you, and I will see you same time next week on Friday for a new one. Bye.